Beginning transmission. This is the audio log of Dr. Cool, O5 Council member, as well as Supreme Commander of Mobile Task Force Alpha 1, also known as the Red White Hand. Hello, everyone. Today, I have another audio request from Miss Morgie Bediddle. At least I believe she did upload a request before. I don't know. I've been having so many requests lately that my mind has been jumbled up a little bit. However, she has requested another interesting SCP. While it is not one of our more famous ones, it does gain itself a little bit of attention here and there. And she, of course, decided to drop by my office because she's about to begin studies on it and ask if I could agree, which, of course, I always will. <laughs> but let us get into our article file for today. Item number SCP-303, Object Class Euclid. Special containment procedures. As SCP-303 has not yet been known to travel beyond the boundaries of sight, the entire area of sight is currently considered SCP-303's containment area. All rooms in sight ought to be altered where possible, so as to have two entrances separated by a distance of 10 meters of or line of sight. Personnel ought to be distributed evenly throughout the site with available radio or intercom contact, so that encounters may be resolved quickly. Personnel who witness SCP-303 ought to be submitted for immediate psychiatric evaluation. All SCP objects housed at site since before 6-4-10 ought to be transferred to Site-B, one at a time. Each SCP object will be transferred again to site Dash A, once it can be verified that SCP-303 has not migrated from site with it. Once SCP-303 either migrates to site Dash B or remains present at site. Once all SCPs in question have been transferred to site A, containment procedures will be updated as appropriate. Ugh, so many sites. Sorry about that. Anyway, description. Witnesses describe SCP-303 as a nude, sexless, emasticated humanoid figure with reddish-brown skin. Instead of normal facial figures, its head is dominated by an extremely large mouth, which bears a set of oversized human teeth. It continually vocalizes a wheezing noise loud enough to be heard from the other side of most solid doors. All individuals who have encounters with SCP-303 are capable of describing it in full, including individuals who have not physically seen any part of it. SCP-303 will periodically materialize behind any closed door, hatch, or other entryway barrier opposite a sentient observer, chosen by unknown means. SCP-303 will then remain behind the door for an indeterminate amount of time. Any individual attempting to open the door or barrier experiences intense paralyzing fear that lasts until SCP-303 dematerializes, either on its own or to avoid being directly seen by another observer. The source of this fear is not clear, but appears to be similar in nature to arachnophobia or ophidiophobia, originating on a pre-conscious genetic level. Analysis indicates that SCP-303 is not, in fact, purposely inducting fear in the affected individuals. SCP-303 does not allow itself to come into direct visual contact with any observer, and has never allowed any one individual to view more than 10% of its form. When the door on the other entry barrier is partially or completely transparent, SCP-303 will materialize in an orientation that leaves 10% or less of its body visible, or cause effects of fog or frost from the transparent surface to achieve the same effect. If SCP-303 is approached from a direction in which there is not a solid object or door blocking line of sight, it will dematerialize before direct visual contact is made. Any electronic or complex mechanical devices that SCP-303 encounters are temporarily disabled. SCP-303 has made no record attempt to physically or verbally engage any observer. 
how SCP-303 arrived at site is not known at this time. SCP-303's first recorded appearance was on 3-1-10. It is suspected that SCP-303 was inadvertently transferred along with or manifested by another SCP on site. All SCPs on site are being re-examined accordingly. Incident Log 303-A Incident Log 303-1 These are just a bunch of incident logs that have occurred on site. Agent was showering in her private quarters bathroom when she became aware of the presence of SCP-303 on the opposite side of the shower curtain. It was wheezing extremely loudly. Startled by the discovery, she accidentally struck the shower curtain, causing it to sway outwards. The curtain partially wrapped around SCP-303, revealing that it was standing less than 0.5 meters from the curtain, standing erect and facing the shower. Agent reports sending approximately the next three hours sobbing in the shower, quietly as not to disturb SCP-303. Agent reported that the wheezing stopped very suddenly, at which point in time she was able to exit the shower. Incident 303-3 Agent encountered SCP-303 inside the site. Second floor break room. He was attempting to obtain coffee creamer from the counter cabinet when he heard loud wheezing emanating from the cabinet and was overtaken by overwhelming fear. Agent later reported that SCP-303 was huddled in the cabinet in a fetal position. Agent claimed to be certain of the information despite failing to open the cabinet door. Later, when the cabinet was examined, one container of powdered coffee creamer was missing. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, note. This is the first recorded instance of SCP-303 removing an object from the scene. Well, why exactly SCP-303 wants powdered creamer is, well, beyond me and my colleagues' understanding. Anyway, Incident 303-6, Doctor was discovered dead from dehydration in the second floor storage room. It is estimated that Doctor spent up to five days in the storage room before being discovered. A small 40 meter times 40 meter decompression chamber separated the storage room from the adjoining hallway. SCP-303 occupied the decompression chamber for the duration of Dr. Isolation in the storage room, disallowing entry from either direction and making it impossible for Dr. to leave. Now, Test Log 303-A, a team consisting of Dr. Researcher, four security personnel, and four D-class personnel were assigned to be dispatched to any reported incident of SCP-303's materialization in order to immediately perform an on-site testing. These logs taken place at the door to room. From the first floor hallway, SCP-303 was reported to be within room. Test 1. One male D-Class personnel, D-303-1, was ordered to open the door and threatened that he would be transferred to SCP duty for non-compliance. He refused, citing extreme fear. Test 2. One male D-Class personnel, D-303-1, was ordered to open the door and threatened that he would be terminated on the spot for non-compliance. He refused claiming that if he were to do so, that SCP-303 would. He was terminated on the spot. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Test 3. One female D-Class personnel, D-303-2, that had witnessed the termination of D-303-1 was ordered to open the door and threatened that she would be terminated on the spot for non-compliance. She refused, claiming that if she opened the door, that SCP-303 would. Researcher was visibly shaken by this claim. D-303-2 was not terminated. Test 4. One female D-Class personnel, D-303-2, was ordered to open the door. 
One male D-class personnel, D-303-3, was given one combatant knife by security personnel and ordered to until D-303-2 opened the door. After two hours of D-303-2 died from blood loss. D-303-2 made no attempt to open the door. I will admit that this incident was brought before the Ethics Committee. While it may be extreme to some degree, it was brought to me by a researcher, so I had to submit the case, of course. But, anyway. Addendum 5110. SCP-303 appears to have claimed the second floor storage room as its own. It has so far disallowed any personal entry into the room since 4510. It leaks periodically to acquire Foundation property, which is then moved into the second floor storage room. To date, the following list describes all non-classified items taken by SCP-303. 1. Cryotube. Three sets of standard Foundation surgical equipment. 2. D-Class research cadavers. One gasoline power generator, a variety of chemicals, including large quantities of hypothane, phenylalanine, and tyrosine, among others, and one container of powdered coffee creamer, which still has my colleagues wondering even why. In addition to this, a number of classified materials have been obtained by SCP-303. Staff are still attempting to determine what specific purposes SCP-303 may have for these materials. Alright, well, that is the article file for today. I will add on one note that while I can understand that this SCP materializes and therefore is hard to contain, it is still a nuisance and I have showed this to my colleagues multiple times complaining that this SCP is a nuisance and has pretty much dropped morale, therefore it should be detained or at least eradicated in some manner. I have offered my mobile task force Alpha 1 services, however my colleagues say that this is the best option for it. Oh, I swear. Bureaucracy. Well, that's at least what you'll face here. But anyway, Thank you so much, Morgi Padiddle, for your request. If you would like me to read up any other article file request, whether it is your favorite SCP file, or you are working for the Foundation and we at the O5 Council have placed you in charge of an SCP um, case, then please leave a comment below. I will be more than glad to help out. But, anyway, this is Dr. Cool, O5 Command, signing out. <laughs>